All plants on the left here are gallberry. Now, these gallberry are growing in the shade. So a plant that's growing in the shade has a larger, thinner leaf than that same plant growing in the sun. So if it were getting more sun, it would be much more compact, and the leaves would be smaller and thicker. But this is a gallberry, a little group of gallberries here. Out in the open, they would be so thick and low, you couldn't hardly walk through them. If you look as you go by, the way to tell gallberry from lots of other plants is that the upper one-third of the leaf, the bottom two-thirds is smooth on the margin, the upper one-third of the leaf has serrations or little jaggers on it, so to speak. Not every leaf, but most of the leaves. So that's an easy way to tell if it's gallberry or some other plant that looks a lot like gallberry. It's one of the smilax or green briars. Uh, there's, I believe, nine species of it. There's one that has heart-shaped leaves. There's one that has laurel-shaped leaves that are real thin. There's one that has a leaf that's almost round. Lots of different species of smilax or green briar, depending on how you, how you know it. This is uh, Sweet Bay Magnolia. It is a true magnolia, just a different species than what we think of as the, uh, when we think of magnolia, it's usually the southern magnolia. This one's also an evergreen. This is the plant that when it's growing out where it has plenty of light, it's white underneath, has, there'll be a wind or, um, Actually, I love to watch this plant because when a rain's coming, the way the air moves, it makes the leaves of trees, the bottoms turn up, and you can drive down the road if the rain's coming and you'll see all white leaves on this plant because it's turned up the bottom to show you. That's one way I remember this plant. That's Sweet Bay Magnolia. That is a pretty fascinating plant. It only grows two places in the world the northern Gulf Coast and the Atlantic Coast of Georgia and the Carolinas. It grows usually along creeks and branches and rivers. Uh, it's just a, a beautiful plant and it has the habit of having the spiral bark. I got so fascinated with that plant I started wondering if the spirals went different directions on different sides of the creek, you know, that kind of thing but it actually it doesn't. This is a tree that local, the locals call juniper or juniper wood. It's the Atlantic white cedar. Only grows here and along the Atlantic coast. The plant here with the odd shaped leaves, that, that plant gets to be huge. It makes an 80 foot tree in this area. It has the, the leaves with four corners. You see that? That is, that's yellow poplar, or tulip poplar, it's called. <clears throat> the little plant here, that's a, that's a little black gum. We'll see a better specimen. There's one up ahead, up here. Okay, overhead, again, that's not on the list, but that's another species of magnolia that grows here. That is southern magnolia. Magnolia grandiflora, it's, it's, of course, producing the cones and the fruit now. So we've seen the sweet bay magnolia and the southern magnolia so far of the magnolias. Behind you are some more gallberry. A little gallberry thicket there. Here's a plant I, I wanted to be sure and show. This is the red bay. It is a true bay. And this is the one that's used to, to flavor gumbo, the native plant. You can use these leaves to flavor gumbo. Now there is a European, I wasn't supposed to do that. <laughs> there is a European bay, but this is the one the southerners use. This is not filet. Filet is what thickens the gumbo. That's sassafras. This one puts the flavoring in it. Uh, the easy way to find it or to determine if it is a red bay, there's a little insect that makes a gall on the leaf, and you can spot it real easy in natural situations because of that little phloxera. Uh, it's easier to spot it looking for the phloxera than it is actually going by other characteristics.
And that's the only tree that, that actually does that. Well, pecan has a phlox run, hickory, walnut, black walnut, some of those. But amongst the, the bays, this is about the only one. And it's very fragrant. If I crushed the leaf, it, it would be very, very fragrant. So that is, uh, that's Red Bay. Now, just, we're looking at a two or three year old tree here. They get big. They get fairly large, you know. 40 feet, probably. Dan, what else do we have? Dan, okay. is that white cedar always spiral that way, you said? Yep. Yeah. I used to joke with people about cross the creek and it's going the other way. No. That's not true. <clears throat> The tree that's coloring up, you remember I told you it colors up in September, doesn't matter what weather conditions we have. That is black gum, Nisa sylvatica, for those of you that are into botany, N-Y-S-S-A, sylvatica, the water version of it, the water species of it that grows around the swamps, it's easy to remember. It's Nisa aquatica. What? Toothbrush. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks, John. One of John's favorite stories about the black gum tree is about my Aunt Virgie. My Aunt Virgie was a character. Uh, you never knew what she was going to do. Uh, there's stories in my family still about Aunt Virgie, but one thing that she did, she dipped snuff and she used a, a wooden toothbrush. She kept it in the corner of her mouth. And, and some of the old snuff dippers used to use, they called them toothbrushes. The black gum was the tree that the pioneers used twigs from to make toothbrushes because you can chew on it and it breaks into fibers and those fibers won't break off. So they used twigs from the black gum tree to make toothbrushes. So she, Aunt Virgie would send us kids to the, lo the local black gum tree, we didn't have many, to get twigs for her for her toothbrushes. By the way, she lived to be almost a hundred. She went to the dentist later in her years and her teeth were white and worn down almost to the gum. And the dentist said, Miss Virgie, your, your teeth are in really good shape. What kind of toothpaste do you use? She said, W.E. Garrett. And that's a snuff brand, of course. Okay. It's in the shade. Now, look out here, see the, can you see the plant I'm pointing to out here? The one that's about six or eight feet tall. Somebody tell me what plant that is. That's the red bay, that's right. See the phlox are on it? Little knots. That is an almost mature sparkle berry. You see it has that blueberry look to it? but it actually will make a small tree form, puts on blackberries, well, now, and will hold them through the fall and winter. Excellent food source for migratory birds that are moving back north. It's one of the few things, few berries they have to eat at that time of year. Also a small tree here, another black gum, a gallberry, a young sweet bay magnolia. You see how rich all this is in, in different diverse different kinds of diversity. Okay, we will uh, be turning back pretty soon. There's several plants here I just wanted you to see. There's a big southern white, uh, Atlantic white cedar. See the furrowed or the ridged bark. And it, it'll have it, all of them will have a, a twist, uh, usually counterclockwise twist. Tai Tai. We have two species of Tai Tai. T I T I. One of them make good honey. One of them doesn't. This is the one here that doesn't. This is um, this is called summer Tai Tai. It's the one that has the little hanging catkin-like things on it. That one is not good from the standpoint of bees because bees that feed on the flowers of summer Tai Tai, uh, it causes a disease or a disorder, rather, 
called purple brood. So the beekeepers try to avoid or keep their hives away from stands of summer tie tie. Spring tie tie looks almost identical as far as where it grows, habit of growth. The leaves look very similar. But it has white flowers that stand up. Uh, and it is, that's where we get to what we call the tie tie honey. The small oak here. And again, it's a small one. They get 60 to 75 feet tall. That's one of our 40 some odd species of oak. That's water oak. Water oak. It's easy to tell water oak because the leaves are tapered at the bottom and usually have three tips, three little, little lobes, little tips on them. If you look at it very close, you'll see that most of them have, have three tips. That's the way you tell the, uh, the water oak. Uh, one of, as I said, many, many oaks that we have. This is uh, one of the sumacs here, a very good wildlife plant, good quail food. Uh, lots of other birds and animals feed on, on sumac. That is not poisonous sumac. That is, uh, in fact, poisonous sumac has been moved out of the sumac group. And it's now in the same genus with poison oak and poison ivy. Poison sumac has white berries. All the other true sumacs have red berries. Uh, another, good, another good wildlife plant that I didn't even put on here, because again, because there's so many different kinds. Oh, yes. We do have a lot of poison sumac in the area. Uh, there's American holly out there, another holly. Like all the other hollies, it's dioecious. It has it's either male or female plant. Uh, that is what we call the holiday holly or the Christmas holly. It's native here. Um, another wildlife plant like so many out here are. Okay, here's a, here's a plant of beautyberry. Calicarpa americana. Um, this is the native one, of course, the one that has the lavender berries. Excellent deer browse and lots of other wildlife like it. It's usually an edge plant. It needs a little bit more light. It doesn't do as well under understory conditions. It does much better where around the edges and edge of clearings, uh, situations like this, then it can get enough light to grow. Here's another little black gum. See the red? Another thing about black gum that you can actually spot it, the, the side branches on black gum grow at a 90 degree angle. Even on this small one. See how, see how they're coming out at 90 degree angles? And of course it's very pronounced on, on large ones too. Here's a big gallberry. As you pass by, take a look at the leaves and see if the upper one third of each leaf doesn't have serrations. That's helped me a lot in identifying that plant. All right, let's just take a look at what we have just right here. I didn't pick this spot. This is just where we need to stop in order to get back on time, but look at the diversity out here. Layered vegetation, lots of different kinds of plants of different heights and different ages. This is just ideal wildlife habitat. So, what do we have? The small tree there, and again they get much bigger. The one with the little knots or phloxera on the leaf, that's red bay. Here's a good sized American holly. What else? Southern magnolia. The one with the big leathery leaves. I see some Smilex vine creeping over. Here's another species of, I think this is uh, Vaccinia mashia. It's another blueberry species. One of the pines, that looks like slash pine. Got a big liquid ambar. 
Oh yeah. Somebody said a big a big sweet gum over your head there. Thank you. Uh, people with the pioneers especially would chew it as we chew chewing gum today. So hence the name sweet gum. Uh, it's a very good fall color plant. It has star shaped leaves. Um, nice plant. It grows fast so the wood is relatively soft. It's not as strong as uh, as oak. That's sweet gum balls. You know, I don't know if they have any value or not as far as wildlife goes. You've heard the term nose to the grindstone, have you not? No, we don't talk about that. You don't know what nose to... What does nose to the grindstone mean? Working hard. That's what I thought. I thought it meant working hard, you know, steady. Being there with it, working hard. Nose to the grindstone comes from a... It's a miller's term, and it means back when, when they ground the meal and other things, you know, all day, every day, they kept someone there to smell. Because if it started turning too fast or if they had too much pressure on it, the meal would get hot and scorched. So they kept somebody there just to smell. They kept their nose to the grindstone. So it doesn't mean they were necessarily working hard, they were just steady. They, they had to be there the whole time. I like the way I work. That's right. You gotta be there. Steady, but do. not, yeah. <laughs> Mike. Okay, so that's all I have to say about that. <laughs>